Hi guys, welcome to Brand X Reviews and the latest edition of BXR Mailbag where reviewers can just write in, email, questions. If it's something that I feel I can talk about for more than 10 seconds, um, I'll usually do so. So this one comes in from one of our regular contributors and that is Paul Cage. Um, he's been a real legend at sending really great questions in that I can do videos about, so keep them coming Paul. Um, so yeah, basically the question that was sent in was a couple of months ago, so I apologise for the delay, but um, it's kind of relevant, it ties in with some news that's kind of come out recently, so here's the question anyway. These days it's all remakes, sequels and book releases. If you guys could choose any cartoon, TV show, old movie, book or comic that has not had a new release or release at all, what would it be? So yeah, I have a simple answer to this, and that's got to be this. Mulder! Yeah, The X-Files, seriously, uh, such a great show uh, back in the 90s. Now, if you don't know what it is, because a lot of people, weirdly enough, considering this was a massive show, a lot of you, particularly, particularly younger people, um, don't remember the show. It's not really been repeated much on British TV, as far as I'm aware, so just a lot of people just haven't really had a chance to kind of watch it. But it was a show about the paranormal, and it was these uh, FBI agents that investigated unsolved cases, but not just unsolved, but paranormal stuff, so things where regular uh, investigative techniques kind of failed. You had this guy called Agent Mulder, and he specialised in the paranormal, so these these cases that the FBI would work on that involved kind of paranormal stuff, they would be designated with an X, so they were known as the X-Files, and um, they were kind of buried in the basement, and he found these X-Files and he was a guy who lost his sister when he was quite young. She'd been well, he he believed she'd been abducted by aliens, and that actually came to be the case. You found out later on that that was the case. But this was established in the pilot episode. This was kind of who he was and where he was coming from. So he kind of grew up and worked, started to work for the FBI as a, as a um, profiler for uh, just crazy people, basically for criminals, and um, discovered the X Files, these unsolved paranormal cases and managed to become kind of in charge of that and investigating that. Now, the FBI weren't happy with this, so they assigned him a partner, one that would question him, one that would um, be very scientific about everything. Not really to debunk his work, they kind of did say that, but it was more, I think they put it so that she would give the proper analysis, because they didn't just want this loose cannon just running around saying, yep, it's zombies that have done this, or it's vampires, it's ghosts. She would be scientific about this, and maybe just kind of get rid of him. Because there was also a conspiracy going on at the FBI that uh, there were people high up that knew about the, the alien abduction stuff that was going on. So a lot of this is based on actual allegations in the real world as, as to be, you know, because a lot of people that believe that that is actually the case. It probably is, to be fair, as well. Um, a lot of the stuff that you saw in that show, you kind of think, yeah, this is probably true. Um, but anyway, so that was that was the basic premise of the show. And it ran for nine series. It started in 93 and it ended in 2002. So pretty much during the Clinton years, um, that kind of era, anyway. And it kind of just died a death after after 9-11 happened and questioning the government just wasn't trendy anymore. It was just kind of seen as unpatriotic after 9-11 happened. Um, I'm not saying that's why the series ended, but I mean, it was already kind of coming to a conclusion anyway. But I think at this point, The X-Files had really kind of... Its era had passed. It was now about shows like 24 and stuff like that, where the government are the good guys and torturing people to get answers is a good thing. The Bush era basically. I know 24 there was more to it than that there was a government conspiracy in that too but generally the, that was the main theme of the show. So that was that was when the, when the thing was set that was kind of the era that it came out in. So the question is does the X-Files have any place today um, to bring back? Well I would say yes it does because regardless of, of that stuff you know the whole um, political stuff I think nowadays you know the people know now uh, if we're going to talk about the political side of it people are a bit more smart than that I think the, the general television audience do kind of like the whole conspiracy stuff um, 
whether or not there's any many truth to elements of it or not, that's, that's a whole other argument. But I, I think I don't think people would find this kind of it wouldn't be unpopular nowadays. Whereas after nine eleven, yeah, it was kind of uh, not really where TV studios were wanting to go particularly as well, especially ones like Fox that were very um, you must support the government. You know, you're either with us, you're with the terrorists kind of thing. Uh, particularly Fox was like it was Fox that did the series. So I think t by today's standards, I think that's kind of gone back to where it was. So from that from that angle, I see it fitting in now. Would it be? Would it? Could it compete with kind of TV shows of today? So you've got things like Breaking Bad, and all these other sort of very um, dramatic TV shows. I would say yes again. The X Files was a really great drama series. Not just it wasn't really sci-fi as such, and I'll kind of get into that. But, I mean, it had paranormal stuff, so essentially it had sci-fi in it, but it felt more like drama. But not only that, but it's got a really great cult following as well behind it. So it has a lot of potential if they brought this back. Now, um, there is actually very legitimate talk and some very promising um, indicators that they are going to bring this back, because recently... Uh, I think it was back in January, one of the, um, some chairman at Fox anyway had said that we want to bring the X-Files back, not just wouldn't it be cool, but we, we are actively trying to bring it back and making efforts to do it. Uh, they, they mentioned other series as well, like Prison Break. I don't see that happening, to be honest. Um, it's a great show, but I think, I don't know, for reasons I'm not going to go into if you haven't seen the series, I'm going to ruin it, but they ended it so that they pretty much, it'd be difficult to bring back. Um, but yeah, the X Files was was the main thing that was you know the thing that they were talking about, and the fan reaction was quite positive uh, from what I saw. And um, beyond that, a few weeks later, David Duchovny, the guy that played Agent Mulder in the TV show, uh, said on I believe it was the View, which an American chat show, that um, he said something along the lines of It looks good. It looks good now that they're bringing this back. It looks better than it did two weeks ago. So things are improving, and this was weeks after the the announcement that they wanted to bring it back. So it does look like this is actually going to come become the case. Now, when I say bring this back, bring it back as a new TV show, not as films, because that's kind of where they went with it. There was the first film that was sandwiched between series five and six. The series ended in two thousand two, and then six years later, in two thousand and eight, we had our, the second film. Which isn't the sequel to the first film, it's just a continuation. Uh, but that film really wasn't good. It was very average, and that's from a fan. That's from a very forgiving fan as well. That film was not really what the fans wanted. It wasn't what general uh, the general movie-going audience wanted. And it came out pretty much within a week of The Dark Knight as well, which was... Um, quite a successful film and quite a heavily anticipated film so yeah they really messed up with that one and uh, there wasn't really much of a paranormal twist in that film either well there, there was but it wasn't paranormal to the extent of what we had in the tv show it was ba the film was basically silence of the lambs with a bit of a kind of weird science thing thrown into it i won't ruin it in case you haven't seen it in fact core hasn't seen the film uh, yet uh so core's probably watching this so i won't ruin it for you anyway but, uh, yeah, so they're going to bring it back as a TV show, apparently, if, if it happens. Uh, but like I said, David Duchovny himself said, yes, it looks good. In fact, let's play that clip. Listen, uh, there is a rumour that X-Files is coming back. Please, yeah. please... <laughs> please, please tell us. <laughs> Give us the exclusive. Well, it looks good. That's all I say. It looks good. It looks very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't say for sure, but, you know, it looks better than it did two weeks ago. All right. Wow. Oh, deals okay. are closing. Okay. So there you go. You can see it there from that, that um, it does look quite promising that they're going to bring this back. Um, hopefully that will make up for the, the, just the way that they ended this this really great series on, on an absolute downer because the, the show itself, when it ended, didn't give us much closure. I mean, the... They did in series seven, I think it was, or series six, no, series six. They basically gave us the the government conspirators that were all involved in the alien abduction stuff. They all got killed off uh, for the most part. Then in series seven, we def 
definitively found out what happened to Mulder's sister. We've, um, I've had this argument with Corey. It's like, oh, but they didn't. They'll change it again. It's like, well, they did. They definitively summed it up. There was another two series after that, and they never changed it. So you definitively know what happened to it. Now, they could, that could all change if they bring the series back. I'm with you on that, car if you've got that argument to make. They could change it again and say, no, actually, we, we missed. If we informed you in Series 7 when we told you what happened to Mulder's sister. This is what actually happened. Or was it? You know, they kind of keep you on on the hook like that. Um, but no, I mean, the, as it stands now, they definitively told you what happened to the to the sister. So the little things like that they did tie off. But then they went on to do some really rubbish stuff. Um, they got Mulder and just made him go on the run, and it was just really convoluted. It was because the actor didn't want to do the show anymore, uh, or if he if he would do it, he would just do the odd appearance. I didn't like the way that was handled at all. It was like he's back, he's gone again, he's back, he's gone again, and it just didn't it didn't match with the way his character would be and the reasons why he's gone or why he's not coming back just fell out absolute bollocks. Um they replaced him with another character, not the actor played the same character, it was another it was another character they brought in called Agent Doggett, played by Robert Patrick, who was the liquid metal man, the Terminator two uh, Terminator was liquid metal guy uh, he was great uh, I know that the, the viewership of the show went down after Mulder left and it was replaced by this agent Doggett um, I thought the standard of that, that show seriously picked up after series 8 because um, series 7 just got too comedic it got too Hollywoodified, if that's the word um, it, it's still good but there were just some episodes that were just really not what the show was about originally and um, I don't know, it just it just felt weaker in series 7, that is my least favourite series, so they refreshed in series 8, Mulder had left well he'd been abducted, an agent Doggett came into it and it, it was like a breath of fresh air when he came into it which is kind of weird like I say that the, the fan following kind of died a death after that point, but then they had this other agent called Agent Reyes as well and she was quite good, she was a bit kind of annoying and new agey but uh, I liked her so um, I wasn't happy with what they, the way they ended the Mulder character and the series ended pretty much with him on the run being on um, wanted for murder or something. He was on trial and he escaped and it just wasn't a good ending. It was all up in the air. You wanted to see what happened next knowing that that was it. The show was done. You know. Um, having said that, they did do a film six years later in 2008 which, like I say, wasn't great. They did kind of undo some of the damage they said well Mulder you're no longer wanted by the FBI they've kind of forgiven and forgotten so that kind of undid that a bit but the series also killed off some really great characters called the Lone Gunman who were um, quite popular characters and in fact they even had their own spin-off series that ran uh, parallel with series 7 so that was back in 2001 in fact the pilot episode of that came out nine, uh, sorry, six months before 9-11 and it was about a plot where the government plans to f hijack remote control an aeroplane and fly it into the World Trade Center to blame it on terrorists to kickstart a war so they, the government can profit from this war. Yeah, that's what happened like six months later uh, in real life, obviously. Well, the, the Twin Towers got attacked and whether it was a remote control hijack and all that stuff, that is quite a credible theory because there are government documents that suggest that that was what they wanted to do in the 60s, uh, hijack remote control documents. Um, I don't wanna, I'm not turning into Alex Jones here and talking about conspiracy stuff, um, but that is... <laughs> that's quite an interesting little uh, part of the X-Files history and mythology there which is really uh, really kind of a sign of the times to be honest but anyway that's that's all another debate but yeah they killed off these lone government characters that had that show that was about not paranormal but about government conspiracies and uh, so that was a real shame they just killed them off I think they just did it because there was a lot of fan demand for a second series of the lone gunman and so what better way to shut that up than to kill the three characters and say, right, we're not giving you another series. We can't, the dead, forget it. Get over it, fans. That's not how you treat the fans, especially after nine years of loyal service that we put in for the X-Files. And again, that was right at the end of the series. It was like one of the last episodes of Series 9. So it was, it was just horrible to see. That. It was so pointless as well. 
Um, anyway, that's you know that really pissed me off. So to, this is kind of answering your question, Paul. This is something. This is why I would want to bring it back. It sounds like I'm kind of slagging the show off. I'm not. I love the show, but this is why I would want to bring it back because the way that they ended that series wasn't good. Um, what else can I really say about it? Um, like I say, there's, there's, there is talk to bring it back, so that would be great. I believe it would be very successful just because it was it was great drama and it's got a great cult following. It was quite scary as well, especially those early ones. I mean, when the, the show started, I was... Well, it started in 93. The, the UK didn't get it until a year later, so it was uh, late 94 uh, when terrestrial television viewers got it. I know it was a bit earlier for Sky, but I didn't have Sky when I was a kid. So it was late 2000, no sorry, 2000, late 94, so I was 13, and um, yeah, I used to watch this in my own, in my bedroom, in the dark, and it scared the crap out of me, some of them, it would give you nightmares, it really would, some of the stuff. Those early episodes, they knew how to be scary, and Chris Carter always said as well, you know, it's only as scary as it is believable, and it felt believable, the, the, it was so well done, in that... Although it was dealing with the paranormal, it was dealing with ghosts, it didn't feel like a sci-fi show, it felt like a drama. And it was set in the real world. It, it was things like offices and just um, creepy warehouses and stuff like that, that that actually exist. It wasn't a fantasy world that they were setting up. Um, so, yeah, just really well done. And I hope that if they do bring it back, they keep that at its heart and soul. They keep that real world feel to it. Because I know in the early 90s, uh, the paranormal was a big... Th well, all through the 90s, the, the paranormal, particularly the whole alien stuff, was massive. Um, not just in terms of the, the having it in sci-fi stuff, like films like Men in Black and those kind of things, but reality TV, uh, there was a lot of paranormal TV shows. I mean, there still are, but to the extent that they were back then, particularly in the UK, they, they showed a lot of these programs, like Strange But True, I think, which was... Was that Michael Aspel that... that um, presented that and, and just other stuff as well and just generally reality shows as well like cops and things like that um, it became entertainment for the first time I mean you have stuff like before but it was it was big you know those were big shows and like police chases and stuff like that and the OJ Simpson trial all, all reality TV show stuff but then they mixed that in with the X-Files that kind of it felt like it was a reality TV show mixed in with paranormal stuff which was also massive so it was just a really great um, way of just getting in on that to that, that interest at that time so I would say the X-Files was one of the best TV shows that I've ever seen I um, don't know if it's my favourite but it's, it's certainly one of my favourites and um, I think that it could do very well today so I've kind of blabbed on about it now anyway but uh, I have done other videos about the X-Files as well I think those are some of the first videos I did at Brand X Reviews um, I did a three part thing where I was kind of going through the merchandise and the video tapes and the DVDs and just there's a lot of stuff there's comics in fact they did a comic series run I haven't read it but it's called season 10 because the X-Files ran for nine seasons but there were quite a few comics that you could get of the X-Files back in the day and they recently did a, a season 10 um, comic series uh, which I might pick up at some stage but you never know if they bring back the X-Files you're going to see a series 10 so um, in fact they could call it series X Roman numerals series X series 10 that, then it's the X-Files brilliant perfect do it <laughs> but yeah so um, such such a great kind of thing back in the day and uh, I just I just hope that if they do bring it back that it's good that they don't mess it up I'm going to leave there I've rambled so um, that's that's my answer for you Paul I hope that that was something that you can uh, I hope that answers your question anyway, there were a lot of other things I could have said but uh, I think that, that pretty much covers it so I've rambled for 18 minutes so I will definitely leave it there if there's any more submissions for Bronix Reviews BXR Mailbag feel free to leave them you can do it on the Facebook page the website the YouTube channel you can subscribe on YouTube but if you just go to the website bronixreviews.com everything is on there and accessible through there so um, I look forward to f future submissions and I will see you next time thank you very much for watching Mulder they don't want you involved they don't want to hear your theories they feel your methods your theories are Spooky? Do you think I'm spooky?